Hello friends, welcome into the Cowboys Report presented by BetDSI, the internet's number one sportsbook. I am your host, Tom Downey. We're under two weeks away now from the NFL Draft, so let's do another mock draft for the Dallas Cowboys. Now we went through our offensive only one, now it's time for our defense only mock draft. The point of this here, focusing on the defensive side of the ball, who could be on the board at each of the rounds for the Cowboys? Now there's going to be some double dipping because we'll fill all the defensive needs and even with only six picks the Cowboys will be fine and out did I mention also this is defense only even on the offense only one we still had some comments about why you guys or why the Cowboys didn't take a safety so we'll start things off round two pick number 58 overall once again no trades in this one now for the Cowboys these were the guys on the board as I did my submission that were notable players Sean Bunting is there along with Trayvon Mullen, two guys that fit the Chris Richard mold at cornerback. Two safeties were left. Taylor Rapp was off the board. It was Juan Thornhill and my guy Darnell Savage. I'll make note, Jalen Ferguson also there, but I really don't want him at pick number 58. After his agility testing, I don't think the Cowboys feel the exact same way on, Th on Ferguson as well. So I'll go with the guy I think the Cowboys are more likely to pick. That's Juan Thornhill. Safety's your biggest need right now, although biggest might be a bit of a misnomer because the Cowboys roster is in really good shape. But Thornhill is kind of... He's got a little bit of Byron Jones in him in the sense that he's a freak athlete and has some safety cornerback position flex. Now, I kind of have some doubts about him in some short areas, but he played plenty in the box for Virginia, even though I think he might profile more as a true deep guy. But most importantly for the Cowboys, he checks off the two biggest boxes, I think, for the Cowboys and for myself. Ball skills, to take a drink, producer Brett, and speed. If you have both of those things and you're not a disaster in terms of being able to actually cover guys, I think you'll make some success there. So I like the idea of pairing Juan Thornhill and Xavier Woods together. I know Thornhill's a bit more of a hybrid than, say, Jonathan Abram is, who was also off the board there for the Dallas Cowboys. But I think he makes sense, and we know the Cowboys have interest in him. They brought him in for a pre-draft visit, one of the 30 they're allocated. So Thornhill at pick 58. I don't know if he's actually going to be there, but I think he's one of the more likely options for the Cowboys, given that we're projecting a full 57 picks before they even get on the clock. As mentioned, today's show is brought to you guys by BetDSI, the Internet's number one sportsbook. Head over to chatsports.com slash bet and to use that promo code COWBOYS120 for a 120% deposit bonus. They're going to have all kinds of NFL draft prop bets. You can make quite a bit of money if you follow me on Twitter at WhatGoingDowny. I did during the Combine. We'll do it during the draft as well. That's chatsports.com slash bet, promo code COWBOYS120. We'll move now to round three and a couple different very intriguing options on the board hill. Tristan Hill, who we mentioned in our, in our pre-draft visits along with Gerald Willis. We've mentioned Anthony Nelson before on the show as well. And then two intriguing cornerbacks, Jamel Dean and Isaiah Johnson. Now, I am open to any of these players off the board here, but I'm trying to do what the, I think the Cowboys would do. And if he's there at pick 90, I think Isaiah Johnson might be the guy. In fact, I'm not even going to rule him out all the way at pick 58. He is a textbook player for what Chris Richard wants to do. Super tall, super long, and ran a 4-4 40-yard dash. And oh, by the way, was a receiver originally. That's kind of what Richard Sherman ended up being. Now, Johnson needs still development and work. He's more of a take him on day two, have him learn for a year, and then he takes over a year later, which for the Cowboys, you can afford to do that. And look, at pick 90, you're normally not going to find a day one starter. That's not how the NFL draft tends to work out. So despite his rawness, the upside's definitely there. Now, I don't necessarily want to spend a top 90 pick on a corner, but it does make some sense projecting ahead to 2020. Byron Jones, Anthony Brown are going to be free agents. After that, Cheeto and Jordan Lewis are free agents, and there's not much depth. So from a long-term outlook perspective, cornerback makes some sense. And if you pass on one in round three from the simulations I've done and what I've heard from around the NFL, you're going to have a tougher time finding that type of freaky long athlete that Richard wants unless you really, really wait until round seven, round six. 
So should Dallas use an early round pick on a corner? Type 1 for yes, 0 for no. Trying to provide some alternative views of maybe what you've seen out there right now. I do think corner is a consideration along positions like wide receiver, tight end, the defensive line, because the Cowboys, after they get a safety, as far as I'm concerned, you can truly approach it as a best player on the board situation. Let's move then to round four. Couple defensive tackles there. Dalen Mack, who I like a lot more than Kingsley Keek, even though they play a little bit different roles there. Daniel Weiss, who we've mentioned before. I wanted to mention the best edge on the board. That's someone like Sutton Smith. That's not great right now. I'm not a huge fan of him. I don't know what his ideal role actually is in the NFL. And there's also Taven Coney, the linebacker from Notre Dame. But let's get our defensive tackle. I wanted Gerald Willis, but he was not on the board there. He could be an option in round three. So I'm going to go back with Daniel Wise, who fits what the Cowboys typically like more defensive tackle than Kingsley Kiki or even Dalen Mack. Wise is a little bit undersized. But he's more of a penetrator and more disruptive than those other players are. He's a three-technique guy. So this fits into the common theme right now with defense. Not going to make a huge impact in year one in all likelihood. But in year two, where you could lose in potentially both Malik Collins and maybe even Tyrone Crawford. The Cowboys want to move on there. You need more three techniques. Not necessarily for right now because you have... Tyrone Crawford, you have Malik Collins, Christian Covington can play there if needed, Daniel Ross has shown some flashes in limited roles, but he's not a guy you bank on, I wouldn't mind seeing Taco and or Kerry Hyder get some reps there, but most of those guys don't have a long term locked into roster spots with the Cowboys, so you bring in Daniel Wise, who I know producer Brett hates because he's a Kansas State guy, but you bring in Daniel Wise, he could develop into a good penetrator, a bit undersized, but passing downs are king in the NFL. I like the fit there for Wise in round four. So what's the biggest need for the Cowboys on defense? Let me know in the comment section. I figure most of us are going to say safety, but there are arguments for defensive tackle, for defensive end, and maybe even a long-term cornerback as well. Move now to your other round four picks. Some players to go off the board, though. Sutton Smith is no longer there. Uh, Dalen Mack off the board, which I'm kind of upset by. Kingsley's there, but I don't want him, and I don't know if the Cowboys are going to spend a top 150 pick on him. Dontavious Russell's there. It still seems a bit early for him. Wyatt R R Ray is your best edge rusher. I I'm not intrigued by that. I did strongly consider... Uh, Miki Egbule, the linebacker who's kind of a Sam defensive end hybrid out of Houston. But I'm going to go with Taven Coney instead. Really good production at Notre Dame. The problem is, I think he profiles more as a two-day player in, or two-down player in the NFL. It's just not there in terms of explosiveness and speed. I don't trust him in coverage, but he can stop the run pretty well. He was a tackling machine at Notre Dame, 123, and he can blitz. So I want to at least try having him at that Sam linebacker spot. And where the Cowboys sit right now, you've got Sean Lee, Jalen Smith, Leighton Vander Esch, Joe Thomas. I love those guys as a top four duo, or I should say combo. But who plays Sam in base downs? Are you going to have it be Christian Cummins, who you drafted last year but never really got on the field? Is it going to be Justin March Lillard? I'd at least explore someone like David Coney and see if he can become that Sam linebacker for you. Covington can still make the roster, but with Damian Wilson gone, in theory, there's room for one more linebacker on the roster. But with linebackers in general, it's not a great class. It does get a little bit dicey. All right, folks, mark your calendars for next Thursday, April 18th. As we've mentioned before, we're going to try the fan-led mock draft. Could be a disaster, could be awesome. Who knows? Only way to find out, though, is to be subscribed to us on YouTube, youtube.com slash Dallas Cowboys Report. That'll be 4 p.m. Eastern time, as it always is on Thursday, live here. A fan-led mock draft. You guys make the picks. I'll throw out suggestions, but in the end, most votes wins for the Cowboys. So make sure you're subscribed, youtube.com slash Dallas Cowboys Report. On to round five now. Dontavious Russell's still there. Kahari Willis is also on the board, a safety, but I've already filled that need. I don't need a fifth one necessarily. So I'm looking at edge here. Three guys jump out to me. Carl Granderson, like the talent, uh, massive off the field issues right now. That's a no-go for me. I don't hate the idea of Austin Bryant. I'm intrigued by it, but we've mentioned him before, and I think Jalen Jelks might fit the role for the Cowboys a little bit better. So I'm going to go with him here in round five. Long and lanky edge rusher who isn't the greatest athlete. That's the big concern there for the Cowboys. 
but he played out of position a lot at Oregon. He was almost an interior defensive lineman, and at his size, that made like no sense. So he's very much a project. He didn't improve as much as I would have liked to see him improve this year, but the tools are there for him to, to work with, and he can become a far lesser version of like a Dion Jordan or something like that. Obviously, the sack production is not there, but he's long. I think he can be a better athlete than me. I think the athleticism is better on film than it was in terms of testing. So for jokes, look, it's late day three. You're taking shots here. Let's find an edge rusher. If you wanted Austin Bryant, I get that too. But I think he's a little bit lesser than many of those edge guys on the board, at least the guys from Clemson in particular. So I went with jokes there in round two, or round five. I almost said round two there. Wow. Round five, I think that's a good fit there for the Cowboys. Let's move then to round seven. So at this point, we've pretty much filled the needs. We've got a defensive tackle. We've got an edge rusher. We've got a linebacker, a corner, a safety. So now we can go a bunch of different directions. Two guys the Cowboys brought in, Dre Greenlaw and Chris Westry. Westry's interesting, but he might be more of a UDFA target for the Cowboys, or maybe he is a round seven pick. Shreef Miller, who I don't mind. That could be an option there. Derek Roberson. I'm sure some of you Texas guys remember him. But I'm going to go with Greg Gaines. I like my big one techniques. Let's add some extra depth. Now, maybe Gaines doesn't make the roster. Most seventh-round picks don't, after all. But maybe he's a practice squad guy in year one. He can share uh, beard grooming tips with Travis Frederick, for example. Decent athlete for his size. He's going to be a one technique. He's never going to be a shoot the gap, do a three technique, whatever. Short arms, again, fits that one technique role. He's going to be a first and second down guy, but he is the classic one technique, like an Antoine Woods, for example, who sticks around on an NFL roster and plays a role. It's not a big role. It's not a $10 million a year role, but it is a role that NFL teams still need, even in today's pass-happy NFL. Let's recap, then, my latest Cowboys mock draft. Again, defense only. That's why there are no receivers or tight ends or offensive linemen or backs taken here. Juan Thornhill in round two. Isaiah Johnson in round three. That's secondary now, built very much in the Chris Richard uh, mold. Daniel Wise in round four. Taven Coney in round four as well. Again, two fourth round picks for the Cowboys. Jalen Jelks in round five, taking a flyer there on a lanky edge rusher. And Greg Gaines in round seven, who might be a practice squad guy early, but can also help at the one technique position. So grade this defense-only mock draft. I like my mock drafts, obviously, but I know not all of you do, and that's why I like the NFL draft so much. Everyone's got, at times, a very different opinion. That's what makes it fun. I don't take anything personally either. So let me know in the comments section, A, B, C, D, or F. Hey, Cowboys fans. Thanks for watching the Cowboys Report. If you haven't already, click right here to subscribe to our channel for all the best Cowboys coverage on the internet. That's news, rumors, highlights, mailbags, film studies, and a whole lot more. And I'm making your lives a little bit easier as well with the next Cowboys Report video right here.